clock is continuing to move though. 104, 103, six point lead for Wakefield. The Milton High football team learned several valuable lessons in its season to savor in 2022, a thrilling run through the playoffs and an improbable berth in the Division III Super Bowl at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. While it seemed preordained the Wildcats would prevail in their first ever Super Bowl appearance, the most painful lesson of that stinging 34-28 setback against Wakefield was that sometimes the outcome in football, as it is in life, doesn't always go as predicted. Um, we lost last year. Um, it, was, it was left a really sour taste in our mouths. Um, I couldn't sleep the night of. So the only thing I thought of was to kind of get back there. The challenge before them was clear. If the Wildcats were to return to the Super Bowl at Gillette Stadium, they would have to finish the job by taking it a step further and winning the first football championship in program history. It was also clear, however, the Wildcats had one tough act to follow. When the Wildcats made an improbable run through the playoffs to earn a repeat trip to the Super Bowl, redemption seemed at hand when Walpole lay in wait as their opponent in the Division III championship game. It seemed a perfect scenario for Milton to avenge a sobering 42-23 setback at Walpole in week six. But when the Timberwolves surged to a 14-0 first quarter lead in the Super Bowl on a one-yard run by Logan Keyes. Touchdown Walpole. Logan Keyes at a one-yard dive and Kamari Hughes' 68-yard touchdown catch from Noah McKenzie. McKenzie back to pass. Look, firing across over the middle. Got him! Kamari Hughes, what a throw! It left the Wildcats reeling. Oh. See you later, oh. 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 What a throw and catch again! McKenzie. But the Wildcats were far oh from being goodness. out of the fight. If their regular well, season struggles nice. had taught them anything, it was their perseverance and grit were hard-earned badges of honor. We came out of the gate flying. Um, in special teams, defense, efficient offense. The Wildcats opened the 2023 season on the same upward trajectory as their previous campaign, beginning with a 42 to 14 blowout at Situate. It was followed by convincing victories over Framingham, 49 to nothing. At Holliston, 42 to 14. Versus Weymouth at Brooks Field, 31 to 7. And in a gritty defensive effort at home against Needham in a 10 to 9 victory. said to the coaching staff at that point, I'm like, you know, these are the kind of, we have the kind of team where we can be good in all three phases. And these are the kind of teams that win state championships. A blowout loss at Walpole was followed by narrow losses at Taunton, 21 to 14. and against Natick on senior night in a 17 to 16 100. setback. That is good for a Natick touchdown. Oh boy. The three game swoon at the end of the regular season cast doubt on Milton's chances of returning to the Super Bowl when the Wildcats tumbled from the number one seed to number three in the MIA Division Three playoff bracket. And I felt like the losses, we didn't play our best and I feel like they really helped us uh, get our minds right for the playoffs and like move forward from those three losses. As the number three seed, Milton hosted the first two rounds of the playoffs 
and the Wildcats caught fire, winning three in a row, beginning with a 30-14 victory over Minishog. It was followed by a 28-7 victory over Dartmouth at Brooksfield. Huey is in for the touchdown. Diving across the line and Milton strikes for the fourth time. That win set up a neutral site semifinal at Shrewsbury High, where Milton punched its ticket for a return trip to the Division III Super Bowl with a 37-14 victory over 10th seeded Westfield. But in the Super Bowl, things looked bleak for the Wildcats, who trailed Walpole in the first quarter, 14 to zero. Even when we got to Gillette, it wasn't, oh, look at the bright lights. It's like, I've been here before. Yeah. I know what I need to do. I'm not losing again. Running behind a veteran offensive line anchored by senior captains, Griffin White and Josh Riccardi, senior running back Nathan Huey helped the Wildcats gain traction. And I remember going down 14 nothing. and I told one of my guys, I was like, we need one here. So Nathan gets a, a couple of good games, some nice cutbacks. And I think we had some first downs going, like we were finally, play, we were finally playing uh, Milton football. Miller, who entered the game within two touchdowns of tying Owen McHugh's season record 31 touchdown, began his assault on the record book with an 11 yard TD strike to Ronan Salmon. It put the Wildcats on the scoreboard 14 to seven and triggered a stunning response of 42 consecutive points. After Ben Caledonia recovered Ben Parmalee's strip sack of Walpole quarterback Noah McKenzie, Miller found senior classmate Will Renz for a tying four yard touchdown pass that made it 14 all early in the second quarter. That's uh, William Renz on the Touchdown. Miller struck for his second TD of the quarter and third of the game to tie McHugh's program record on a perfectly delivered 24-yard TD toss to Salmon. It was followed by Harrison Hinkle's 42-yard pick six interception return, a decisive score that enabled the Wildcats to double up Walpole 28 to 14 just before intermission. There to pick it up, Harrison Hinkle. Harrison Hinkle, yeah. When the Wildcats went into their locker room at halftime, energized by their magnificent first half revival, they knew to a man the job was only half done. I mean, I was telling the guys it's not finished. Like obviously knowing that like we're getting the ball at half too kind of leads you to think like it's even over, but we didn't score on that opening drive in the second half. So we just had to keep our heads down and we knew it wasn't finished. The Wildcats were halfway from hoisting the hardware, but there was still work to be done, particularly by the defense. The Wildcats hounded Walpole quarterback Noel McKenzie by ramping up their pressure on him, harassing him at every turn with senior linebacker A.J. Cicerone coming up with a sack and an interception that got the party started. Cicerone just made that last coverage, picked off that one and returns it to the 36. Harrison Hinkle struck pay dirt for the second time in the game with his 27 yard right. touchdown catch from Miller to make it 35 to 14. Luke Hartford's 10 yard TD run got the celebration started in earnest on Milton's sideline. The outside and he's in. It rendered meaningless a late touchdown by Walpole, which did little to dampen the mood in the stands where several members of last year's Super Bowl team watched with pride, along with the rest of the Milton community at large. Milton left no doubt about the outcome of the Division III Super Bowl with its otherworldly effort in its 42-21 victory. Patrick Miller completed 16 of 26 passes for 248 yards and four touchdowns to set the program's single season touchdown record with 33. Miller's favorite target, sophomore Ronan Salmon, made six catches for 75 yards and a pair of touchdowns to go over 1,000 receiving yards on the season.
Senior running back Nathan Ahuey carried 29 times for 135 yards and helped seal the victory in the second half with several hard-nosed runs for big chunk yards to finish with more than 1,000 rushing yards on the season. And sophomore kicker Aiden Rowley converted on all six of his PATs in the title game. The postseason accolades poured in for the Wildcats with captains Patrick Miller and Ben Caledonia earning Globe All-Scholastic honors and coach Steve Dembowski earning Division III Coach of the Year honors. Miller, who passed for 2,665 yards and Caledonia, the team's leading tackler, were recognized as Bay State Conference All-Stars along with teammates Ferris Collins, Nathan Ikiwi, Mudia Odion Ukpebor, Josh Riccardi, and Ronan Salmon. In the end, the 2023 Milton High football team enjoyed its spoils of victory, hoisting the hardware in a euphoric celebration at midfield of Gillette Stadium, where this proud band of brothers were feted by the community for being the first to bring a state football title to Milton, where these Wildcats forever will be remembered as one tough act to follow.